The next space sensation, making history hundreds of kilometers above our heads, Luca Parmitano is the youngest astronaut on a long-term mission to the International Space Station. The 36-year-old Italian blasted up to the ISS just a few weeks ago and joins us live from the orbiting outpost, answering your questions and sharing a rare glimpse of what life is like in space. Luca, many thanks for joining us on iTalk. I'd like to know, what's impressed you the most up there? Well, it'd be easier to answer what has impressed me the least, um, because everything has impressed me. Uh, living aboard the station is a very sensorial experience. Everything here is uh, perceived differently. Um, the things that we are used to uh, take for granted uh, don't apply here anymore. And so uh, every time I, I look around, is a, is a surprise, is a different, uh, a different sensation. But um, I, have, I, I think I'm surprised. Uh, as in, it, what's impressed me is how um, technology in the space station is really um, uh, part of our daily life, and but we adapt so fast that now it just feels like home, even though we are surrounded by uh, by technology and a very thin, uh, very thin wall between us and space. Okay, well we'll go straight to our first question, and that comes from Belgium. Hello, my name is Kelly from Belgium, and I want to know what has been the most difficult thing for you to get used to in space. So there's been months of preparation, but what took you by surprise when you were up there? Well, I have to say that uh, um, the training that we get on the ground really does an amazing job of getting us uh, ready uh, for, uh, for living up in space on the space station. The environment looks oddly familiar after spending years, literally two and a half years, in different buildings around the world that, that where we have uh, mock-ups of the session uh, of, of this module where I'm living right where, I'm, uh, where I am right now so uh, we are we actually very, uh, uh, very it looks very familiar once you get here because you've seen it so many times uh, I actually uh, was surprised um, that the thing that was really hard for me however was getting used to how things work differently different in a zero G uh, what what is easy on the ground, like staying still, is almost impossible uh, on, at zero G. You, things float all the time. It's impossible to put something somewhere. You always have to tether it or attack it through Velcro or other means. So it's the, um, this reverse way of thinking where uh, things that are easy on the ground are hard on space and vice versa. That was the, most hard, the hardest thing so far to adjust to. Very briefly, now, but how long did it take you to adjust to that? Well, I, I think I'm constantly adjusting to it. Uh, it's it's a, it's an evolving process. Um, a um, a two-week span is what it really takes to start feeling completely confident about uh, moving in, three, in in a three-dimensional world and uh, um, getting used to, uh, to 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 the microgravity environment. Okay. Well, Luca, we're going to go to our next question now. Hello, my name is Gregory and I'm from Belgium. I would like to know what your daily agenda is in space. So you have got a very busy schedule up there. You're carrying out a lot of experiments. Can you briefly give us an outline of what you're doing? So on the space station at any given moment we have hundreds literally of experiments. But um, we, we are only involved in, uh, in a few of them at the same time. For example, uh, I am uh, currently doing um, a diet experiment where uh, we are trying to figure out, the scientists are trying to figure out how to reduce the loss of calcium. And my colleagues, I'm, I'm glad you asked this question because I have right here an example of what, of what science we were doing. Uh, this is an ultrasound machine right behind me. And my, my, two, my two colleagues, Chris, Chris Cassidy and uh, Karen Nyberg, were actually uh, uh, analyzing each other's spine through an ultrasound machine. And this will be a, re a revolutionary way for people on the ground to be able to analyze damages to their spine uh, in remote areas where MRIs or X-ray machines are not available. This is going to be a very big impact on the ground as we speak. And there are some health issues up in space for you personally. Tell us what those are. Sure. Um, 
So uh, one of the issues is the loss of calcium. Our bones need gravity to uh, to to grow and get strong in a very simple way. Uh, if they're not, they don't experience that the gravity. They they do not. They they tend to lose their their, their calcium and to become brittle and fragile. It's all sort of like osteoporosis. Another issue is uh, at a cardiovascular level, you, your, your uh, muscles tend to atrophy because you don't use them as much. I don't use my legs almost, almost at all while moving around in space. And the third one is related to, uh, to, uh, to vision. Uh, because, of, uh, um, because of the zero-G environment, uh, eyes tend to change, to, uh, change shape that will affect long-term vision, even permanently. Okay, Luca, we're now going to have a question from one of your biggest fans, and that's five-year-old Alessandro. Ciao, Luca, mi chiamo Alessandro. Ma mia domanda è... Hello, Luca, this is Alessandro. Is there any other forms of life on other planets in space? Abitati nello spazio. Grazie. Ciao. So, um, with the Kepler telescope, he, he's spot on, isn't he, Alessandro? It sounds amazing. Yeah, it sounds like a great kid. The question is, are there, uh, are there other forms of, of life on, uh, on other planets, according to me? So I, if you're ready for my answer, uh, that would be, uh, the, the, my answer would be this, and this is Luca speaking, not, not the astronaut, uh, just, just a simple person. I believe that there are so many planets, uh, millions and millions of planets in the universe, that what we lack right now is imagination. If we, if we could only imagine something different than what we call life, maybe not based on, on water, not based on, 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 the, on oxygen, but on something completely different, maybe methane, maybe uh, a, a, you know, diff a different form of something comparable to what we call life, then I think that, the, that it, we're talking more of a probability than a possibility. And, and that's the simplest way I can put it. Luca Parmitano, many thanks for joining us on iTalk. That's all for now, but you can see who our next guest will be by checking out our website or following us on social media. Then, if you have a question you'd like to have asked, post it to us in video or text format. From the European Parliament studios in Brussels, I'm Isabel Kumar. Thanks for joining us.